So I have this fabric, isn't it beautiful? It's linen that my mum gave me for my birthday, which was almost six months ago now. And I've just been kind of too scared to cut into it because it's way, way, way too beautiful. But I have been inspired by a fashion designer called Sarah Lynn Tran. I didn't know she existed until very, very recently. So if you don't know about her, that's totally fine. We can learn about her together. One thing that she does really well with all of her own personal style is she just like looks effortlessly sophisticated all the time. And I think it's partly because she does these really luxurious, wide, but pleated, semi-tailored pants. And I think they look beautiful. So today I'm gonna try and make a pair of Sarah Lynn Tran pants out of this pattern. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a pattern review, I think. And I'm gonna turn this into a bit of a series. This is the Pattern Fantastique Terra pant. This is a hard copy pattern that I picked up from the Selvage Society when I was there one day. I have been looking at a couple of different patterns, but a lot of them have like elasticated waists or they're quite wide leg. But I want these to be sort of a little more tailored with this sort of reverse pleat in the front. A lot of the other patterns that I've seen have a pleat going the other way. But what I love about Sarah Lynn's pants is that they are just so cool. And they have these this uh, style line that I really like. When I read the description on the back of these pants, it sort of fit the brief. So this is a suit style pant with, a deep, with deep front tucks. That was the clincher for me. The Terra has two fit options, high-waisted or mid-rise waistband. I'm gonna go for the high-waisted and um, follow the instructions as it's described on here. And I'm gonna tr try and make them quite long because I have a few pairs of pants that are a bit shorter, but these I wanna be able to wear to work, but also for like going out. It says a slight bow leg inspired by classic Japanese men's denim with a narrowed hem cropped at the ankle. That sounds perfect for me because I've got kind of shorter legs. So I think if I make these, it's gonna be excellent. I've been wanting to get started on this for a while. I'm gonna stop talking and start cutting out. If you've been here for a while, you know that I'm basically allergic to pre-washing my fabrics. I'm just a little bit lazy and I just never do it. Part of the reason that I think I never do it is because I'm worried about the, they're gonna fray. But a little trick that I learned from Instagram, Lorenza, the label, you can go give her a follow. I think she's in Melbourne. Anyway, she had this great tip that before you pre-wash your fabrics so that they don't fray, just overlock the edge. So that's what I did. I just ran through the edge with my overlocker and then I, pre I have pre-washed and pressed this. So I'm already feeling very accomplished in myself and I'm feeling very confident about this project. So time to get the scissors out. Let's clear off the table and get cutting. I also earned a little bit of money from YouTube and I spent some of it on buying myself a new light. So thank you guys for making that happen because without that, I probably wouldn't have treated myself to such a nice light. Hopefully the lighting quality of my videos is about to improve. And I just want to say thank you for being here. Okay, I'm in my active wear. I've got my tape measure and I've got the pattern. So I'm gonna start to check my measurements against the measurements given on the pattern on the back here. So I'm going to the waist measurement. It's always the smallest part of your waist. For the hips, it's always the largest part of your hips. Eight. I basically measure as a 10 for most of the measurements, but I decided to go a size down on the waistband as it says in the instructions to do that in order to, to get the high waisted shape. I graded the pattern from a 10 at the leg down to an eight at the waist. And I used some tracing paper to trace off the upper part of the pattern piece. This tracing paper is yellow because I used it in architectural school, but regular baking paper or grease proof paper works exactly the same way and is much, much, much cheaper per roll. I was determined not to mess up cutting out this precious fabric. And so I wanted to do things properly and I was really trying to concentrate on taking a lot of care and making sure I was accurately transferring all the measurements that I needed for the pieces so that I didn't accidentally cut the wrong thing. Just cutting out the paper pattern pieces took forever. And then I agonized over the placement of the checks in the linen because I wanted to make sure that I had a good print alignment on both the front and the back. As per the instructions, I also added five centimeters to the leg since I was doing the high-waisted version. The pattern instructions say to measure the waist to hem length and go from there. 
but I couldn't find this anywhere written down in the instructions. I tried to measure the pattern pieces and compare them against my body, but I really wasn't confident. If I'm ever not sure I have enough fabric, I make sure that I cut the biggest pieces first and then I'll work with the remnants to cut the smaller pieces. I often don't buy as much fabric as recommended on patterns as I know I can always do a little bit of Tetris to get the pieces to fit, but I think that's a skill that comes over time. So if you're still new to sewing, then go with the recommended allowance on the pattern when buying your fabric. You know what I hate about sewing? The fact that you can spend hours on a project cutting out and you haven't even started yet. I think I've cut everything out. I'm not sure. I managed to find some scraps of this IKEA fabric that I had left over from my graduation dress project that's going to work for the pocket bags because I didn't really realize that I needed lining. I also need a zipper which I don't have so I'll have to pick one up tomorrow or sometime. But right now I think I'm going to just do something else for a little bit and then I'm gonna whip out the machines later and get cracking on these pants. I think that this is gonna be a little bit more like a voiceover and review of the final pattern once I finish sewing everything. I don't wanna ramble too much so I'm gonna turn the camera off and just show you guys the highlights and then talk you through the rest. It was a few days before I actually made it back to sewing these pants. And so I'm glad I have my little Ikea trays that I bought when I did my sewing cupboard reorganization because I just shoved all the little pieces of interfacing and stuff into this tray ready for another day. And then the first task to tackle was the welt pockets on the back. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to treat myself to a brand new needle for this project. There are a couple of old ones languishing on my pin cushion and you know what? They're probably really, 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 really bad. So let's get a let's get a brand spanker. Universal ass. I'm guessing that means universal assortment. Still, it's fun to say universal ass. Time for everybody's favorite part of any sewing project: winding a bobbin. I say that completely unironically. There is nothing quite as satisfying as watching a bobbin get wound. Don't worry, I'll show you. Come a little closer and I'll show you. I've heard around the place that well pockets are tricky, but I gotta say the instructions in this pattern made them really quite easy. I don't really know what the fuss is all about. So here I'm just transferring all the markings as per the pattern pieces. Accuracy here is important apparently. And then the same with the stitching. I'm also making sure my needle is set to land in the down position. If your machine doesn't have this feature, then I recommend using your hand wheel to get the needle in the down position before lifting the foot and turning the corner. That way the needle holds the fabric in place as you turn, so it doesn't end up all wobbly. And then to make sure I'm being precise when cutting open the welt, I'm using my ruler and I'm trying to be very, very, very careful. As with any project, this one was taking a lot longer than I had anticipated, mostly because the pattern and the method were a little unfamiliar to me. So to give you guys an idea of how long these things take, this time lapse is half an hour of my life, condensed into 24 seconds. I really wanted to keep going with this, but I've had a couple of busy days. It's currently after 9 p.m. and I really wanted to try and get all of this done tonight, but I didn't get home from work till really late. Um, but let me show you where I'm up to and then I'm gonna just do a little voiceover about what I'm gonna do next. So I almost got through doing one whole welt pocket, 
Hooray for me. Congratulations. Isn't it beautiful? Except for when I went to overlock the last bit, my overlocker decided to shit itself and so that prevented me from finishing off that little trick. But I'm basically done with that. I just need to finish off overlocking that side and doing the bar tack here. And then the other side is ready to go. Honestly, don't really know why people make such a big fuss about how difficult these things are because the instructions that I followed are very straightforward and really, really, really great. So I recommend this pattern for if you need to do a weld pocket. Half of life is just sewing lots of stuff and then remembering which patterns have the good hacks for different kinds of pocket insertions or zipper insertions and just like stuff like that because those things are always tricky. Anyway, that's what I'm up to. Um, I might actually just review the next steps before I continue. So once the pocket's done, I'm then gonna do the front tucks and then insert the zipper. It feels like you do a lot of the complicated stuff before you actually get around to doing any of the satisfying stuff. Insert zipper, insert pockets. It's only at the very end that you actually start to put the things together. So that's kind of crazy. Um, great, just while I'm tired, I get to do all the complicated parts. Well, I guess I'll just crack on then. Uh. The tucks or pleats at the front of these pants were a key feature of this pattern that I liked and I really wanted to nail. So I took my time double checking that they were all folding in the correct spots based on the notches. And then in the interest of getting things done, I decided just to start with the zipper and not try and talk my th way through because at this point I was pretty much fried. Like my brain was totally fried. And so I just got as far as I could. And then in the morning I picked up where I left off the night before and I tried my best to get that complicated part done with a little bit of energy after a good sleep. And just as I rounded the corner on the final bit of top stitching for that fly, I broke a needle, which did not bode well. stuffed up. I really stuffed up. So I got confused because the other day I was making a different pair of trousers, some Hour of Power pants, which is a new pattern by Gracie Steele, and I increased the rise on those pants. And then when I went to buy a zipper for these pants, I had in my mind that I was increasing the rise, so I bought a longer zipper than what I thought I was going to need. And then I went ahead and constructed the fly as though I was using a shorter zipper. And what's happened is that the zipper kind of stops here, but then my stitching for my fly doesn't come low enough. And I already put the bar tack on, on that bit. And so I don't really want to undo that and redo that because I'm afraid that I'm going to end up ripping the fabric and having a great big hole in my fabric. So what I'm going to do is kind of fudge it a little bit and I'm going to just restitch the bottom end of this guy here all the way down and I think what is it going to end up happening is I'm going to catch the inside of this fly facing fly extender whatever it's called and I don't think that's going to be a terrible um, travesty because basically the pieces that I cut I cut for an 18 centimeter zipper I bought a 20 centimeter zipper and I didn't extend or readjust <laughs> I didn't extend or, or adjust these bits so that's why I'm kind of like battling. This is also the very first time I'm ever doing a fly in a pair of pants before. So yeah, and the instructions I'm gonna say are not super duper clear. There is a whole bit where I think it's meant to say you need to stitch the thing, but it doesn't actually say stitch the thing. It just says, again, use a something seam allowance. And it's like, okay, what do you mean? Like, do I need to stitch it? In hindsight, I could have gone and used another pattern and followed those instructions, but for the sake of this pattern and this pattern review, I wanted to just like try and stick to the instructions that have been given. And I gotta say, they're a little lacking. They're a little lacking. But okay, we're gonna persevere, we're gonna get through. I'm gonna unpick from basically the bar tack down to the front seam, and I'm just gonna extend that so that I miss the stopper and come in just underneath. I broke a needle when I did it the first time because I landed straight in the stopper and like this is a jeans zipper so it's extra heavy duty. <sighs> just 
just a bit of a pain. That's where I'm at. I could probably stitch it first and then unpick it, but I am a little worried that I'm going to unpick the wrong bit of thread. So I'm going to unpick it first and then restitch it. And hopefully that will solve the issues that I'm having with this fly. And next time I do it, I will make sure that I adjust the pieces before I put the fly in and make sure that my line is ending up in the right spot. I think this is all just like a good sort of lesson in how to do these things and also maybe doing it on a lower stakes sort of fabric first before committing to the fancy linen that your mom buys you. Just saying, just saying. One day I will learn to make a proper toile before I cut into the real fabric, but you know what, that's not really how I roll. So we're just gonna go with, go with the usual ammo. Okay, so here I'm marking the new line that I want to follow and then I'm using the red pin head as an indicator of where the zipper stopper is so that I don't break another needle. And it's a little bit wobbly in the end, but you know what? I can live with that, that's fine. I went ahead with constructing the front pockets, which turned out totally fine because I was eager to start stitching the leg seams and finally get an idea of the fit of these trousers. Actually, thinking back now, I did stuff up one of the pockets and had to unpick a whole bunch of stitching and redo it. So there you go. That's what's happening in this time lapse, I think. I can't remember. It was a little while ago now. And then I finally pinned everything together and tried them on and well, they were a little bit large. I just pinned these together and tried them on and they're just like really big. I thought they were going to be a little more like streamlined. And I don't really know what to do. Um, I, I retook my measurements again and I think that maybe I should have made a size 6 waistband because my waist measures as a size 8. Everything else I measure as a size 10. It's very difficult to figure out what size I should make for these things because I kind of got a booty, you know? I just am not sure if the pockets and everything and all of this extra fabric that's kind of on the side seam here is doing me any favors. So I think before I overlock and stitch this side seam, um, like top stitching, I'm gonna just maybe just take in the hip slightly and then go from there. I took off a fair chunk of fabric on the side seam to straighten out the silhouette a little, but it was still pretty bowed because I didn't want to mess with the pockets. Trying them on again, you can see how loose they are at the waist. And so I also decided to go a little bit rogue and increase the size of those tucks so that it would cinch the waist in a lot more. It's Sunday night. It's late. I was meant to get this video out today. But I'm struggling with this schedule that I've set for myself. I'm gonna try and just at least get the waistband on or even just the belt loops that I have prepared yesterday. Um, yeah. I've realized that this project was a lot more than maybe I could manage right now and Yeah, I'm really tired, but I'm going to try and get some stuff done. Hopefully I can get this video out later in the week. We'll see. If you're still here watching, then thanks. It means a lot. So I redid all of the arrangements for the pocket and the dart, and I made the dart like twice as big as it needs to be mostly just to take in the waist a whole lot more because the waist was just a bit extremely large and I was a bit worried that it just wasn't going to fit very well so that's why I did that now I'm worried I've made it too small but this linen is quite forgiving it's like got a lot of give in it so I'm hoping that maybe that will help um, once I get the waistband on I can just see how I go I'm really not sure if I messed up something entirely because I took a lot of fabric in but the waistband that I had cut out initially at the size 8 waistband it still fit all the notches and stuff I don't know it was really weird and you can tell that I'm running out of steam for this project I even didn't bother with doing the cuff that I had cut out because I totally forgot to interface the bits of the legs that I needed to that was also just another weird step this project really took a lot out of me I've got to say 
I ended up just hemming them and going from there and then I tried them on and they were fitting kind of well and I decided that I didn't want an exposed button at the front so I went for a concealed sort of closure with another button on the inside as well. All right, are you ready for the final reveal and what I think about this pattern? Let me show you. First of all, I think the fit is wildly too big and I think that this pattern really needs to include some final garment measurements to help with fitting along the way, fitting starting out, and just to give an idea of like what it is at the end that you're gonna end up with because it's just like, it doesn't exist anywhere in this pattern instructions or anywhere on the pattern information at all. I've only really just started paying attention to that sort of stuff in a pattern and so to finally like pick something up and try really hard to measure myself and make something fit really well and then to just not have that information in the pattern is really, really frustrating. So that's like a thumbs down on that element of the pattern. The other thing that influenced my decision to make a size 10 rather than a smaller size is that Pattern Fantastic, the maker of this pattern, is an Australian based pattern making company. And so I thought that their sizing would be closer to like a typical Australian sizing. I would say that um, if for my North American slash US Canadian viewers, in Australia, our sizing numbers are like bigger than US numbers. So maybe like a size 10 in Australia is what a US might be a size six. So that might give you an idea of like, I'm typically an Australian size eight to 10, which might be a US size four to six. So I really thought that going with a size 10 would be close to my actual measurements, but maybe it's my own fault for not actually reading and really following the waistband measurement, which was provided, but still, I was still not quite an eight, so I decided to go with a 10. I don't know, it's just, there's a lot of factors at play. These pants in the end turned out a lot more flowy than I was expecting. The pattern describes it as a suit style pant, but really they are quite flowy and open and wide leg compared to what I was expecting. I have a couple of other pants patterns that I've made that have been much more uh, straight leg. That's kind of what I was hoping for. I don't know. It just, it was a little confusing from the get go. If you are planning on making these pants, then I would say work from the waist measurement only, unless you have a really big difference between your waist and your hip. There's plenty, plenty, there's plenty, there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room in the hip of this pattern so that if you did size down even further, then I think that there'd be plenty of pant left for the rest of you. I mentioned this earlier, but the redeeming feature of this pattern is that the welt pockets instructions are very, very, very clear. And I was a little hesitant to start this project because I knew that there were welt pockets involved. I didn't want to make the patch pockets. That's an option for this pattern. I knew there were welt pockets involved and I was a little nervous about making them, but these instructions were super clear. As for the rest of the instructions, they were a little lacking and it was a little frustrating. Even at some points, the illustration would just flip from one side to the other. For example, putting in the front pockets, the illustration on a couple of the images shows the right-hand side of the pant, and then the next images show the left-hand side of the pant, and that just really confused me for a while. Like, I am consider myself like an intermediate to advanced level sewer. I haven't sewn a lot of things in my life, and I can usually decipher instructions and diagrams really well. Um, but yeah, some of those things just did not make sense. Overall, I think I'm gonna give this pattern a six out of 10 with the redeeming feature being the fact that the welt pocket instructions were super duper clear. As for the rest, there were some parts that were just really unclear and the fact that there were no final garment measurements or even the fact that it mentions doing a waist to hem measurement, but it doesn't provide any waist to hem measurements. Like that just totally fucked me. Otherwise I probably would have made many more adjustments. Um, earlier on in the piece rather than getting to the point now where I'm probably going to end up making a few more adjustments to these trousers to make them fit a little better because they're a not as long as I was hoping they would be despite the fact of increasing the length by five centimeters as recommended. I also have short legs so an ankle um, length pant usually runs a little longer on me so that's why I didn't increase any more of the length and yeah as I said there's no waist to hem measurement which was just <laughs> Ridiculous. Why put it in the instructions and not include it? Why? To be honest, I'm a little disappointed in the final outcome. I was really, I had big dreams for these trousers. I hope that my mum likes them because she gave me this fabric for my birthday. She hasn't seen them yet, so I'm just gonna see if she likes them when she sees them. Anyway, yeah, let's hope that mum doesn't hate them. <laughs> 
And as for this pattern, well, I wish that I'd sewn something else and just reversed the front tuck rather than buying this pattern purely because it displayed a front tuck. I realized that I could have just used another pants pattern that has the tuck going to the outside rather than to the inside and just flipped it. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? Oh well, you live, you learn. That's what I think about this pattern here. Thank you.